Hello everyone and welcome back. Till the previous session, we have learnt about all the different instructions of the data transfer group of instructions in 8085 microprocessor. In this session, we are going to summarize all of them. So welcome to the session, Summary of Data Transfer Instructions. So without any further ado, let's get to learning. Coming to the topic that we are going to cover in this session, as announced earlier, Today's topic is going to be summary of data transfer instructions in 8085 microprocessor. Now at the very beginning of this chapter, if you remember, I told you there are seven groups of instructions in 8085 microprocessor. From those groups, the first group that we chose was data transfer instructions. I also told you there were 13 instruction types and cumulatively there are 83 opcodes. Today, I'm going to show you whether this claim that I made earlier is true or not. Additionally, we will also revise the different instruction types that we have been learning so far. Now, if you remember, coming to the data transfer group of instructions, the first instruction type that we covered was MVIR, D8. Now, in this instruction, the mnemonic MVI stands for move immediate and we are supposed to load a register with an 8-bit value via this instruction. Now where this 8-bit value will come from? Well this is sent through the instruction itself and as you can notice there are seven different instructions which covers seven opcodes of this instruction type. Basically this R in here represents all the different registers that we have in this particular incomplete programmer's view of 8085. That is, the registers A, B, C, D, E, H, and L. So with this type, we have covered seven different opcodes. Now the second type of instruction that we learned was MOVR1, R2. If you remember, the mnemonic MOV stands for move, and we are supposed to load the register 1, that is the destination register, with the value inside the register 2, that is the source register. And if you remember, I told you in this session, in place of R1, if we keep A, and we iterate all the different registers that we have, and if the same is done for the rest 6 of them, it will cumulatively give us 49 instructions. Isn't it? So, with this type, we also covered 49 more opcodes. Coming to the third instruction type, MOVR, M. Here also, we are supposed to load a register with the 8-bit value in the memory location. So clearly, the 8-bit value will be given from the memory location, which is being pointed by the HL pair. And what is the reason for that? If you notice, in all these seven opcodes, or instructions to be precise, we have got the source as M. And M is nothing but the memory location pointed by the HL register pair. So with this specific type, we covered seven more opcodes. Next, we learned about the fourth type, that is MOVM, R. This performs exactly the opposite of MOVR, M, that is the previous type. And if you remember, here we are supposed to load a memory location with the 8-bit value which is present inside the register specified by the small r. Now this instruction just like the previous one also falls under the register indirect addressing category and the reason for that is in the instruction itself we are never mentioning the memory location so before execution of any of these that is these seven instructions we have to make sure that within the HL register pair the intended memory location has been loaded. So with this type, we have covered seven more instructions. Or in other words, seven more opcodes. Coming to the next type, that is the fifth type. If you remember, it was LXI RP, D16. In this instruction, the mnemonic LXI stands for Load Extended Register Immediate. And as you can notice, within the instruction itself, we are sending the data of 16 bits. So this is the immediate data, and due to that reason, it falls under the immediate addressing mode. 
Now in this instruction type, as you can see, we studied about three different instructions. So with this type, we covered three more opcodes. Now coming to the sixth type, that is MVIM comma D8. If you remember, this is also an immediate addressing mode instruction type. And in this type, we only have one type of instruction, that is MVIM, and the D8 can be any 8-bit data that the instruction will specify. So with this instruction, we covered another opcode. Coming to the seventh type, it was LDAA16. We are supposed to load the accumulator with the content which is specified by this memory location, that is address of 16 bits, which will be sent via the instruction itself. And as I told you earlier, for this type, there is only a single opcode, that is, we can only load the accumulator like this. And the reason behind that is, accumulator is a special purpose register. So with this type, we covered another opcode. Now coming to the eighth type that we have learned, it was STA16. It performs just the opposite of LDA16. In other words, in case of STA16, we are going to store the contents of the accumulator in the memory location which will be specified by this A16 or address of 16 bits, which will be fed to the microprocessor via the instruction itself. And just like LDA, it also has only a single opcode. Thereafter, we covered the ninth type that was XCHG. And this falls under the implied addressing mode. And the reason for this is, if you remember, XCHG stands for exchange the content between the DE and the HL register pair. Within the instruction itself, we are never mentioning the register pairs. However, reading this, the microprocessor inherently knows that it is going to exchange the contents between the DE and HL register pair. And with this type, we covered another opcode. Coming to the next type, that is LDAXRP. This is the type that we studied after we studied about the addressing modes. I hope you remember that. Now, while we were studying this, we learned in this type, we have got two instructions, LDAXB, and LDAXD. Generally, LDAXRP stands for load accumulator from the memory pointed by the extended register. Now, which extended registers we are talking about? Well, BC and DE, not HL. And the reason for that is, we already have this instruction MOVA comma M, which performs a similar functionality. So it's no use to use same kind of instructions, isn't it? So with this type, we covered two more opcodes. Thereafter, we studied about the STAXRP, that is the 11th type in the instruction types. And if you remember, for this also, we have got two instructions, STAXB, STAXD. These two will perform just the opposite of LDAXB and LDAXD. Basically, with this instruction, we are supposed to store the accumulator contents in the memory location pointed by the extended registers BC and DE. We also don't have instructions like STAXH, and the reason for that is we have got MOVM, A. So with this type, we covered two more opcodes. Now after this, we studied about the 12th type, that is LHLDA16. This too is an example of direct addressing, because Via this instruction itself, we are sending the address of 16 bit of the memory location. And do remember, this is the starting address. Now, why am I stating like this? Because the content within this particular address is going to be an 8 bit data, which will at first be loaded in the L of the HL pair. Thereafter, the content from the consecutive memory location will be loaded in the H register of the HL pair and that is load HL pair using direct addressing mode and the address we are sending via the instruction. Now this instruction only works on HL pair. So with this type, we covered another opcode. And finally, the 13th type, that is the opposite to load HL with direct addressing, that is store HL with direct addressing and the address we are sending in here as well. 
This instruction also uses two consecutive memories and that is the content of the L register will be stored in the first address. Thereafter in the consecutive location, the content of the register H is going to be stored. And with this, we covered another opcode. Notice, we covered 13 different types of the data transfer instructions. So this value is correct. Now let's calculate the opcodes. The first type has got 7 opcodes. Second type has got 49 opcodes. So that gives us 56 opcodes. Thereafter, we studied about the type 3, which has got another 7 opcodes. So 56 plus 7, that is 63. Coming to the next type, it had got 7 more opcodes. So 63 plus 7 will give us 70. So by the time we finished learning about the fourth type, we had covered 70 opcodes. Now coming to type 5, it had got 3 more opcodes, so 73. Type 6, 1 opcode, 74. Type 7, 1 more opcode, so 75. Type 8, another opcode, so 76. Type 9, 1 more opcode, so 77. Now in case of type 10, we had learned about 2 opcodes, so 79. And thereafter, type 11 is 2 more opcodes, so 81. And finally, type 12 and type 13, 1 opcodes each, so clearly 83 opcodes. Now do you believe me? In the data transfer instructions of 8085, we have got 13 different types and we covered 83 opcodes. So in this session, we covered the topic, Summary of Data Transfer Instructions. All right, people, that will be all for this session. In the upcoming sessions, we are going to solve some problems using the instructions that we have learned so far. So I hope to see you in the next ones. Thank you all for watching.